Allora, buonasera a tutti, siamo ad un altro incontro di eh, Sguardi Incontra, che è eh, un altro progetto di Sguardi Altrove Film Festival sulla piattaforma My Movie eh, realizzata per il 2020. Abbiamo mh, una grande opportunità e con noi Agnieszka Holland, una grandissima regista internazionale, e polacca ma internazionale e, e che è ritornata ad essere la presidente del European Film Academy, quindi è una delle occasioni e, e una delle ragioni per cui la, la intervistiamo. Ecco, um, Agnieszka, uh, nice, it's, a, it's a very great pleasure <laughs> with us, it's a great occasion for Sguardi Altrove Film Festival and um, So uh, we decided to, to do an interview uh, because of you, for many reasons, <laughs> but also because I think it's very interesting that you have uh, become another time a president of European Film Academy. And uh, during your presentation, you have, you have uh, told that uh, the, the, the time are changing uh, and uh, we need uh, for the cinema, for, for having good cinema, um, independent cinema, uh, we need uh, uh, experience and imagination. Would you describe us? What <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I've never been the president of EFA, of European Film Academy. I've been the chairwoman of the board, which is Sorry. more... No, it's fine. It means I, in, in, the, you know, in the hierarchy of functions, it's one step up. Uh, and before, um, for a long time, um, like, I don't know, 20-something years, it was Wim Wenders who was the president. Yes. And before Wim, it was Ingmar Bergman. So I'm in the chain of very, you know, respected, yeah. respected filmmakers. And I am the first woman on this position which is probably the sign of the time. I hope that after me, it will be many of us. Uh, in this or another function, the most important is um, uh, to have more women uh, in, uh, in the cinema, to, uh, to have more uh, writers, directors, producers, and the films made by women. And um, this change is unfortunately very slow. We are talking about it for last decade. And it's going like up and down, you know, it was 20%, 21%, 18%, 19%, you know, it means it stays in this area. Yes. And um, I'm not, I don't think that statistics are the most important thing, but if it's, it's always sign. like it's that, sign. if it's always like that, it means that the 50% of the humanity can express itself through the audiovisual narration only in 20% in Europe, which is already much better than in US when it's seven to 9%. And, and some countries decided that with our support or with the academy support, uh, they decided that it's enough is enough and that it needs some kind of the push and Scandinavian um, countries, the Scandinavian uh, film institutes made the decision uh, to uh, force um, the grand donors to give 50% to the, to the women's cinema. And it, it actually it made immediate results because the, this year in the selection, the most, um, most interesting films coming from Scandinavia um, and nominated for the best director, two of them for best actress, came from, uh, came from uh, women, from the women. So that is one thing we can to focus, the bigger diversity and um, the equal and just representations of, um, of the filmmakers, of the voices, let's say. Um, and another thing which is a real challenge is how, <laughs> frankly, I think the most, the biggest challenge is how to make better films, how to, how to, how to inspire um, the um, European filmmakers to be more courageous and ambitious and, um, and take the risks because I think that with the current crisis, uh, economical crisis which will come after pandemics and technological uh, changes 
and um, the, the you know the long time when the cinema um, have been closed, and um, and the consequences, economical consequences, but also psychological, sociological consequences that the younger generation got so used to you know to live in the virtual world and to connect uh, with the, with the content through the uh, through the internet that. Uh, we have to create the real desire for them to come to the movie theater. And I think that the movie theater is totally different experience and it always will be. It is like, it is like with the music, you know, you go to the, to the live music, to the concert, or we are listening it through some means, it's different experience. And it's different um, emotion, it's like um, you cannot have this sensual and emotional connection and also being in the dark room and being really uh, focused uh, on this, on you know, watching uh, or listening. Um, it is very different that when you are <coughs> home and you, you know, interrupt, you go, you, you have absolutely, to- Absolutely, absolutely. Oh. The unique, unique experience, like theater, but in this way. Yes. Yes, so I would like, you know, I would like it to survive and we have to do <laughs> everything which is in our means. You have to. <laughs> to help it. And, and especially now with the, you know, with the, with the constant connection to many devices, internet and so, uh, the people are, are terribly like unfocused. And I think also it's not good for your brain and for your soul and for whatever. Every moment something is popping up on the screen, you know, and you react to that and you switch, you switch, you switch the application. It's a nightmare. And anyway, it is like that. It will be like that. So we have to create some kind of the um, psychologically hygienic um, <coughs> and, uh, world regeneration. Space. Right to 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 restart our brains and our hearts. So so that it will be. You know, I think that we'll be focusing very much on this. And another important function of uh, of the academy is that it's the real um, real platform uh, to connect uh, the people, the filmmakers from different countries. And um, during the last uh, like seven, six, seven years, I've been close to the academy. I. I can observe that it's developing more and more and that we need this feeling of the community. We need to feel that we are some kind of the, you know, of the family of um, artists and technicians and producers and that we have like same aim to make the cinema more alive and more um, valuable and more relevant also. Uh, and also to help each other and, you know, to fight for somebody if, uh, if the persecution comes. And unfortunately, we have in Europe more and more countries uh, with authoritarian or close to authoritarian uh, regimes um, uh, who quite often are taking the filmmakers or journalists as a, as a target of their persecution. So we are also here to, you know, to, to, to give the voice to those who are voiceless because they are, you know, um, censored or arrested or, or, or something. And we are here also, you know, to fight for the freedom of expression, of artistic expression, of, 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 um, of speech. Um, so it's where we are. Many challenges, <laughs> not a lot of money. <laughs> and uh, the, our, my, my main ambition is to, um, uh, to like attract the young filmmakers to take over, you know, to take the responsibility for this organization and for this community. Um, and uh, and uh, that will gonna happen, I think. I, I thought that my term is four years, but actually six, which has scared me a bit. But during this, after six years, I will be in the age of a uh, new president of the United States, Joe, Joe, Joe Biden. So I think I can stay till this um, period, but after I, I, I need somebody <laughs> like 30 years younger to take over or 40, that will be <laughs> ideal. Sure, yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. It's a, great, it's a fantastic project, very, very strong. And, and I think we need that really, not only for the cinema. Another another question I have for you is about this, pro, this um, 
the protest of the uh, women in Polonia. You are, I think, one of the few intellectuals that take uh, part for them, uh, the, the protest, the demonstration for against the law of abortion. <laughs> I think that they are supported, that the process, uh, protest is supported by many intellectuals. Maybe uh, they are expressing it uh, in a little shy way. I'm maybe more uh, like... Yes. Uh, uh, but um, I have to tell that, you know, that um, the protests have like the support of the majority of the population altogether. So um, uh, what is difficult with this pro uh, protest and, and, you know, what is the fantastic experience for me, the discovery, is that it, it, it is really protest of the very young generation. You have the um, uh, students of the universities, but you have also, you know, the, the uh, high, school, high school students and many of them, I think that half probably are the people of age of like 15, 16, 19. Um, and that is totally different in, different in the generation that we expected. Like five years ago, when it was a, a survey about um, what kind of the, you know, of the ideology or what, uh, what kind of expectation they have, the youth of the, you know, of the time, they've been quite nationalistic, uh, going into the right and far right. And uh, those who are supporting, you know, the human rights and the freedom of speech and democracy and so, they've been in minority. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they are in majority and the big way, like, and women, young women are like 80%, uh, they are for progressive issue, but in the first place, they hate, you know, they hate the persecutions of the minorities they, they want the women to have all the rights they deserve. Uh, they want the equality for the LGBT people. You know, they, they are suddenly like immune to all this very heavy church uh, and Polish churches. I don't want to tell even what it is because I'm very <laughs> angry with them. Some kind of the unchristian sect it is for, I think for the people who really believe in the gospel that is like, you know, like the travesty. Anyway, and the, and the religious education in the schools, which was in, somehow imposed by, by the liberals and conservatives after the, the fall of the communism, gave, of course, the reverse effects. And those young people, they hate it. They, and we see that they don't have authorities, which is unfortunate also. The church is not authority at all. And all political class, they don't trust political class. So the biggest challenge is how to translate this anger and this uh, feel of freedom to some kind of the political change. And that is not easy. I but think it's very, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult in this period also. And do you think the which is possible way to do that? There is a party that can... Well, I don't know, you know, the parties are weak and, you know, this political classes, I, I, I will tell that the heroes are, are yeah. tired, you know, they, 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 they are not inventive, they don't have the energy, they don't have the really high ambitions to, you know, to understand that the modernity creates totally new challenges and that you cannot just, you know, do what you always did. And... Um, uh, unfortunately, we don't have very, very creative uh, politicians. Maybe somebody will come now, you know, maybe say it will be born. Maybe it's the period of the platitude of the, you know, mm. this kind of it. And it can maybe change. I hope so. Um, yeah. Mm. Maybe, maybe now the know. Europe can help them, no? Europe. But... No, I, it, 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 I, I, I hope because I, with Ursula von der Leyen and, and other, it's better than the situation yes. before. I hope. Yeah, so. more women, you know, in the commission and strong mm. women. And I, I really like, you know, the, the justice commissar and, and um, some others. And the and parliament is good. In the parliament, in the European parliament, you have a lot of young women and very, you know, very, the real fighters. I really believe that now the women have to take over, that the men are confused and, you know, and, and tired and a bit impotent. So, mm, uh, 
so it, I think that the change will come, you know, I don't know if this year, next, this year not because the year is ending and we are under sign of the corona, but uh, next year in two years, uh, it can be, it can, it, something has to change because it is a feeling yeah. and impotence and stagnation and the danger of the neo-fascist or some kind of the populist extremism, it's still very present. It, it is good that Mr. Trump has to leave the White House, but uh, the situation is very precarious. It's not, it's not easy for the next one for um, um, Joe Biden to, to, to really take the real control over the situation. So we, yeah. in every country we have an asshole, you know, like that, so. We hope so after the pandemia. <laughs> after so, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I have other, if you like other to answer. Uh, one is uh, about your film, the la your last film. And uh, I have, uh, I have uh, many curiosity uh, about your cinematography and your life because I, I, Obviously, um, study that you have studied with Vaida, your, your teacher is Kundera, and uh, um, this is uh, all, uh, person, all, uh, all a person that I love uh, very much in the film and the outfit. Um, so I think that you have repeat many, many times about this subject, but I, I am very, it's a great pleasure for me to know uh, something about uh, this person, uh, about your point of view. You know, it's really always um, heartwarming and, and, and good to speak about Andrzej Vaida, because he was really somebody extremely important um, to me as, a, as some kind of the master, also as my producer and also as a director, as a director who, 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 who uh, directed some of my scripts. Um, and um, as a friend, um, so um, we've been close till his dead, and um, certainly he influenced me a lot. He was very generous, also. Well, of course, he he was a man, so he had also some moments of the weakness. But uh, but, <laughs> but he he had very strong wife, you know. In the moment when he was like hesitating, in which direction <laughs> to go, she knew. And no, I'm kidding, of course, but yeah, he, they, they, it was very, very close and very, I think, um, um, very connected um, couple. Um, and, um, and he taught me a lot of things, of course, it means not like directly because we didn't have the um, um, relation teacher uh, pupil, but um, uh, but talking about the things and you know and 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 and, and um, trying the things together and collaborating and just talking as as uh, colleagues and uh, the friends. Um, I he said, he said that uh, you have changed his perspective perspective uh, uh, about the AT problem, AT society in uh, the the AT revolution. Well, I think that I, uh, I infuse him with some, uh, with some curiosity about, um, about the politics and about the change of, um, of, the, of the society, yes. Um, but it was, you know, the communists uh, who hated him and didn't like me at all. <laughs> they, uh, they thought that I have really bad influence on him and that I exactly <laughs> made, made the, you know, the, the, the op opposant from him. Um, and he was, you know, because he was not a fighter. He was somebody who really was focused on his work and the cinema was for him uh, the most important thing, Poland and the cinema. So suddenly, you know, the, suddenly it merged in one in some films, uh, but um, also he, he knew the, you know, he knew the, the traps of, of, of Polish soul and uh, was very provocative about it, even if he didn't want to be provocative, he just wanted to be honest. So this mix of the naivete and courage, I really, I really liked in him very much. Mm. And, but the main thing which I learned from him, it was that the communication is the most important thing in the cinema, that we are doing the movies for the audience and that we have them, um, that the movie exists 
only when the audience respond. Because if not, it's just a, you know, it's in the, in the, in the iron box. Just that, a few people, uh, yeah. Mm. And, um, and he, he taught me how to, you know, how to listen to the audience. Not commercially even, but in terms of the real deeper communication. It's fantastic, yes. So another, another answer, um, you, the, the, the history is for you an important thing for your film. Uh, and I think it's very um, interesting that you uh, told about the story, the great history, the great history uh, um, describing a person, no? like a film uh, like Mr. Jones uh, or the other. Mm -hmm. Your history about the Ibre, the, the problem of the Holocaust or, and other things. No, the reason why, why I don't like to do the history lessons, it's more that I would like to find what, what, is, the, what is relevant in the history, what, what, what we can actualize and um, um, which help us understand better where we are. And I believe, you know, I believe that the history, that, that the past is not dead and that it maybe even is not the past, that it's somehow latently present in the present. And um, um, I felt very strongly when I was doing Holocaust movies that it's now over, you know, that somehow the Holocaust was put to sleep and we've been vaccinated Europe especially was vaccinated against, you know, this temptation of evil and uh, the vaccine unfortunately is evaporating. And it started in 90s probably, maybe even before. Mm. Um, and it's very strong now. Uh, we can see that, the, that it doesn't work anymore. And we have like the new devil, which is, which is you know, which is... Um, the danger of use of, 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 of the of the of the need of the internet media and social media and propaganda made in very un, undirect way even you know yes and the, and the hateful portion which are very easy to wake up among very you know normal people those days and polarization which comes which is like the domestic world something in many societies so um so when I'm speaking about 30s and 40s of, of last, um, of last um, century, it is also because I feel that the things we never resolved, you know, it, it never like really ended and it never was worked out somehow. It, 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 it can come back and it's coming back in different form. And also uh, you have, you have uh, direct many films uh, with, uh, um, about uh, uh, books. One with Olga Tokarczuk, uh, another one, the Secret Garden. Mm -hmm. uh, you... Yeah, some nature films, some films about the nature. <laughs> some <laughs> films about the nature. About the, the women and the nature. And the last charlatan also has this, like... Um, the, the last one. one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Olga, that was very interesting um, collaboration, which ended by, by the friendship, which... which um, which was like tied between us and this, and, and I really, you know, I really enjoyed this friendship very much because Olga is very original, um, very, very kind soul and very original mind, so brain. So uh, to be around um, of her is very inspiring and, um, and her heartwarming. So Olga is absolutely great, not only as a writer, and I like very much her writing, but also as a thinker, and also as a human being, so it's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> it's a very fantastic. The, the, the specific. Yeah, I was project. lucky, you know. I was lucky to meet the the great artists who've been also generous. And we didn't spoke about Kunderak, who I really was very close to him in some moment. In, mm -hmm. but yes, especially the, in you know in eighties or the beginning of my emigration to France and. Uh, and um, and he was my the professor on um, the film school. He taught the history of the literature, and it was the best um, course I, I, I um, ever had, the best lectures. And and you know, I, it's it's strange destiny because he locked himself somehow. You know, he he's not showing his face for forty years, thirty five mm -hmm. years. 
Uh, well, it's, you know, very, very troubled, very interesting, extremely intelligent man. And to me, he was very, you know, giving. He, he gave me a lot of attention and, you know, and discussions with him were very intellectually enriching. So, uh, so yeah, I was lucky to, 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 to be friends <laughs> with, uh, with those people. Okay. So, uh, and uh, what if you want to um, tell us, uh, tell us something about your last film, and uh, and with um, and uh, if you want to tell us the next one, if you have an idea about that. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> no, I finished uh, Charlatan in, in January, I think. In in so, February, it was shown. Um, uh, at Berlinale, um, which was the last normal festival <laughs> since, um, and uh, and after was uh, after I was promoting um, Mr. Jones in France, and boom, the lockdown came, and I was preparing also the series. I, I had to spend this year and the, you know till May next year, um, doing the new series for Apple TV in Paris, shooting in Paris. Uh, which was like, which had to be like some kind of the uh, trev between, you know, the movie, 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 and, you know, and the next maybe. Mm. Uh, suddenly it was cancelled. So suddenly I, 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 I moved to the Zoom. And since I'm spending most of my time in the Zoom, <laughs> the Zoom uh, and I'm, I'm observing a lot, you know, of reality shows uh, of the series like, like the pandemic series and American present election series and Polish present election series and, you know, awakening of the women's movement in Poland is, and those things are so interesting and so full of uh, unprevisible, you know, terms that uh, it is more interesting actually than the fiction. So I'm, I'm observing this now and thinking what kind of fiction I can come with, which will beat this reality. Thank you. I think it's a very interesting. So um, thank you very much for thank the you. interview, and we thank hope to. Grazie. <laughs> Grazie. Grazie a lei. Arrivederci. 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 Ciao.